Hello, welcome back. So once again, we find ourselves in a bit of a heat wave and uh, once again, I'm fitting a heat pump. <laughs> it's cooling off a bit now, but it's been absolutely roasting today up in the loft. Um, but this time we're fitting, uh, fitting the heat pump here at my parents' uh, property. So it's, uh, it's gonna be quite different to fitting the heat pump in my own, in my own house. Um, for one, it's a much bigger property and it's a bungalow and it's detached so the heat loss will be higher. So this is the existing heating system for the property. Um, a really big uh, wood burning stove, 28 millimeter pipe work going to um, a cylinder which does heating and hot water. Um, but the, in, in reality, the, 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 the central heating never really uh, was never really particularly effective. Actually, most of the heat for the property was provided by, by electric storage heaters. To do the heat loss calculation um, of the property, I use the heat punk tool, which is a, an excellent free tool. Um, so if you have a look at the walls here, we can set the U value of the walls. Uh, it's pretty cool that heat punk has a, a, quite a lot of common wall materials built in. This house has got Salcon blocks. My dad built the house himself back in the um, 1980s, so uh, he had he has he's got very good knowledge of exactly uh, you know what the construction is. You set what the use of every room is, and that sets the uh, sets the temperature and the air changes of the room so that's a living room that'll be set to 21 by default but you can also customize it here you can enter in if you want a different room temperature um, and critically here i actually lowered the air changes per hour quite significantly because uh, yes again like on my house i we had a door blower test which confirmed that the the air changes per hour was significantly lower than the defaults used. So then I entered in the radiators, currently connected to the solid fuel um, back boiler. The radiators will, quite a few radiators will need upgrading. So the next step is to proceed to the heat pump section. And then the first step here is to choose a heat pump. Um, Midsummer Energy have got quite a few different heat pumps listed. So just as, as an example here, I've just chosen the, the, the same five kilowatt heat pump, Samsung heat pump that I'm familiar with. Um, so it shows here that the, the heat loss of the property at, at minus 3 is 4.9 kilowatts. But this Samson heat pump at 40 degree flow temperature can only output 4.8 kilowatts. Therefore, this Samson heat, the Samson 5 kilowatt heat pump um, is looking like it's not going to be suitable. It would be if we reduce the flow temperature right down to 35 um, heat pumps. Heat pumps generally um, can output more power at, at lower flow temperatures. Um, but given the existing radius we're working with, this this will be a bit low. Um, you can see here, uh, as, as I change the flow temperature, you can see the heat output from the radiators changes, changes uh, radiators, radiators output less heat at a lower flow temperature, which means if we were going to go for 35 degree flow temperature, the radiators would have to be, have to be very large. But you can play around with this here. Um, you can see we've got quite a shortfall of radiators there in the living room. So we can go ahead and like you know add some more double panel radiators. This is the configuration I decided upon. So I decided to go with a valent uh, aerotherm five kilowatt heat pump. This was quite a good a good fit for the property. It let us run the a flow temperature of forty degrees, um, and there's plenty of capacity in hand at that um, flow temperature. Valent valent actually badged their heat pumps a bit differently from other manufacturers. The fire uh, the, the heat pumps generally output. Quite you know, quite a bit more than the badged rating. Another reason why I went with the Valent uh, Aerotherm heat pump is where we're located. The heat pump is right outside the uh, living room window here. And I've heard that the larger Samsung heat pumps, if I was to go up to an 80 kilo or Samsung, they can, they can start to get a little bit loud. Um, and I also wanted to get some hands-on experience with the Valent heat pumps. And I've heard, heard very good things about them. I then played around with the radiator configurations. Um, so I added two new double panel radiators and upgraded the existing uh, single single panel radiator in the living room. Uh, the kitchen, we're going to go with the original radiator. It's a little bit of a shortfall, but it's right next to the living room. So a, bit, a little bit of heat will ble ble bleed across. That's fine. Uh, and then we just work, worked our way through the rooms, made sure that the rooms that uh, you know, are used and people spend time in. They were the ones that, uh, you know, we, we upgraded the radiators in. Here, it also gives an estimation of the scop that we'll get at 40 degrees. Um, I'm actually open to be able to run a little bit under 40 degrees, but uh, it's always good to design it with a little bit of capacity in hand. Okay, removal of the tank in the loft. 
the uh, the less glamorous side of a heat pump installation. Now just got to rejig the pipework to get the pressurised cold feed down into the uh, um, cylinder cupboard. So this property actually has a private water supply. Um, there's a borehole which provides uh, cold water. When this system was first put in with these header tanks, um, there was actually a st the water supply was coming from a stream, so to give the necessary pressure. Um, there was a hot water tank here in the loft which gave just enough pressure for for a shower. The borehole is uh, is a pressurized system, so it pretty much gets you a full two two and a half bar worth of mains uh, mains water pressure. So that's really great. So we can reconfigure the system to have a uh, unvented cylinder, uh, which will give that full pressure through for the hot water as well, which will really be a really big upgrade um, for the power power of the shower. <laughs> When my dad built the house about uh, 35, 40 years ago and fitted the uh, existing uh, solid fuel heating system, he put a drain off here, a tap underneath the uh, floor level. So when you undo that with a special little, special little socket, um, the system drains to a pipe that comes through the wall outside. By draining down the the back boiler on the wood burning stove. This bit's pretty dirty, but it's been in there a long time. Draining down the old vented hot water tank, which was heated from the wood stove. How long has water been in here? 20 years. Hmm, pretty good. And um, now we've got in place the new 200 litre um, heat pump cylinder with a big coil in it. And I've already made a start uh, doing a bit of the electrical work ready for um, the heat pump. Um, but we're just filling up the cylinder now. We still need to connect up the pressure release and everything. But we're just giving it a just giving it a watertight test with cold water just to make sure we haven't got any leaks. But all good, all good so far. You inspecting my work, Harry? What can you see through the hole? It's a hole to outside, isn't it? All right, making some good progress now. Just got the 28 mm primary pipework in place. Stub through the wall, um, insulated with primary pro through the wall. And then we'll switch to internal insulation along here behind this panelling. And then we're going to go through the wall there into the plant cupboard. So, making good progress here in the plant cupboard. Um, cylinders all been up and, up and running for quite some time now, so that's all good. Um, I've now been starting on the primary pipe work, so these are the two 28mm flow and return that are going to the heat pump. So now I just need to do the flow and put the three port, um, put the three port valve in, which will switch the flow between tank or central heating. Hey, good progress. So now we're all filled up and tested. We see it there. Uh, we're holding about one and a half bar, which is all good. So all the plumbing is now finished. Um, it obviously needs to be uh, needs to be insulated, or at least the hot water hot water connections. So I think it's now time to uh, turn on the heat pump. These are the two new uh, radiators we've installed here in the living room, and we've run new 20, 15 millimeter pipe to these. They're the primary flow and return going to the heat pump. And down here, that's the old flow and return from the old heating system down here, which I will be connecting onto. Uh, but I thought I'd just run the heat pump first to test it on the new radiators. Um, and uh, so at least we can have hot water from the heat pump while I mess around with upgrading a few, upgrading a few more radiators and flushing through the old system. Just doing the final connections here. Um, this is what the inside um, under the back cover of Avalid Aerotherm looks like. Really nice and simple, just the two um, bus wires connecting there, the pink connector, and then we have a uh, live neutral nurse. Hey, outdoor units has been switched on and the pump's just started up. 
I can hear water running through all the pipes, which is a good sign. And the controllers here are just booting up. So I'm just going to run through the install process. Hey, success! So the heat pump is now up and running. It's currently heating the hot water. Uh, and it's so quiet. It's amazing, these valence units. So quiet. And uh, obviously need to do the insulation, but I just thought I'd get it up and running so I can test and check for leaks and everything. Um, so I've got this antifreeze valve here. Uh, connected onto flexible hoses that then go onto 28mm pipe work there. Um, I use these insta valves that were quite a nice um, quite a nice valve. It's got the inch and a quarter a flat face there uh, that goes to a one inch here and then I put that into a bit of 28mm and then on through the compression fittings through the um, antifreeze valve and then onto the flexible connectors. And that's the electrical. This obviously needs to be all all clipped up and attached onto the wall, but it's just connected uh, temporarily for testing. It's super easy this heat pump to to connect up. You just need to mount mount this outdoor wireless outdoor solar PV powered temperature sensor up on the wall. So we're up there. We're on the north facing side of the house here. This uh, wireless temperature sensor and wireless controller inside uh, makes the valence system really easy to install because you can put, put them anywhere. And it's pretty cool the outdoor sensor is powered by a little solar panel on the front so it hasn't even got, uh, doesn't even need batteries changing. Okay, just finished work on the outside unit here. Bailey's just inspecting, uh, inspecting my work. What do you think Bailey? So I've got all the pipes uh, insulated, all the conduit clipped up. And uh, this little anti-freeze valve here, you're supposed to leave a little gap for air to be able to go into the top of it. So um, yeah, a little 22mm elbow um, does the job for that. Um, so I can bring the insulation nice and close and, uh, and seal, seal around it. But yeah, really nice and quiet this unit. So this is the other side of the room to the uh, the airing cupboard where the tank was. You can see the pipework here. We have the main um, heat pump uh, flow and return pipework. Then you go along this wall here behind the stove and then out through that wall there. And this is where so this is the main flow and return pipe going to all the the radiator system. And that's where I connected to the old existing uh, radiator system. Um, but because this we needed more more radiators that than was there I also ran these two 15 millimeter pipes along the wall to uh, two new radiators um, at the back of the living room there so yeah I think this is quite often a quite useful thing that people often overlook when fitting a heat pump you're not just limited to what radiators you have currently if you have the space this bit of space here wasn't being used by anything else and the reason I fitted two radiators here as opposed to one big one is basically two these two radiators were cheaper than one big one of this size which would have been <laughs> very big and difficult difficult to manage this size of radiator it's uh, 800 by 1200 is a bit of a sweet spot when it comes to cost I think these are about 65 pounds each or so um, which is pretty good really for that size of radiator uh, if you size down the cost increases or if you size up the cost increases a lot so we're in the final stages of the installation now just need to upgrade some radiators on the existing heating system um, and all the pipe work is run in ducts underneath the ground here so we can actually access that um, if I do need to do any upgrades, um, it's because the existing heating system is 22 millimeter pipes that comes and splits out. So half of the house runs off one leg of 15 millimeter, and the other half runs off the other leg. So we may need to upgrade the little bit that goes along here and then splits off to the bedrooms. Uh, upgrade that to 22 millimeter because this bit here is 15. Um, but the calculations show that it should be okay. So I thought I'd just try it and see how it goes. And this is one of the bedrooms, and uh, this is a single panel radiator. Um, it's undersized for the room, so we're going to replace it with a much bigger double panel radiator. There we go, new radiator is fitted. This radiator is not much physically bigger, but uh, it's uh, much wider, and it's got a double set of convector fins where the old radiator didn't have any fins whatsoever, so this will have a much greater um, output, which will let us run at a nice low flow temperature. Go final radiator upgrade this afternoon. Upgrading this uh, single panel radiator to a bigger double panel radiator. Hello, Bailey. Hello, Mr. Sheep. All right, let's get cracking. Oh, hello, Mr. Sheep number two.
that's all that done. So that's the third radiator upgraded and I've also fitted two new radiators. Hello Bailey, you checking my work again? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, let's get uh, get it filled up, filled up and tested. There we go, we're building pressure. It's taken a while because we emptied the whole system. It's quite a large system, this is like 11 radiators. Right, let's go around and bleed the radiators. Okay, so we are all up and running. This installation is now is now completed. What do you think? All all attached together, well? Feel that one there. That's the primary flow. Ooh yeah. Is that nice and warm? That's the nice thing about low temperature heat low temperature heating, it's never a scolding risk. That's nice and warm, isn't it? That's the cold input, so that one will be cold. So let's have a look at this wireless valence controller. Okay, so let's go into settings. And then if we scroll down to settings there, and then store level, level settings, access code is zero. Scroll down to installation configuration, and then circuit one. So these, this is the main setup for the, the heating. This is probably the most critical setting. This is the, what's called the weather comp curve. And if we have a look in the valent manual, it'll tell us what curve 0.5 corresponds to. And we, and we, we can increase this if you want a hotter flow temperature, you can increase it. Um, but this curve tells the system to uh, uh, you know, adjust the flow temperature based on a particular um, out, outdoor temperature. So we're going to go for a curve of 0.5. Um, I've also set room temp mod inactive, which is room temp mod is where it modulates the flow temperature based on the uh, based on the living space temperature. I'm testing that as inactive, but I may choose it to be uh, active. Um, hot water settings, we've, I've just set hot water to uh, automatically increase when the tank drops by cylinder charging history is 10 degrees. Um, if we can we go back to the main control system uh, menu here in zone one we can see that the uh, heating yes we can see the heating is on a weekly planner time control weekly planner with a setback overnight of 19 degrees if we go into the weekly planner i've got every every day every day of the week is the same basically every day of the week it's 21 degrees between 7 a.m and 11 p.m. So obviously we may, we may tweak, the, tweak the temperatures as we go, but that's what we're, we're starting with. So yeah, nice easy controller to get to grips with and set up. So yeah, let's see how it goes this winter. I'll do a, another video in the spring to report, report back. There we go. Happy. Installation is complete. Now hand over to the customer. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's, all, you. it's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want any callbacks. <laughs> So, is this the only flood in? <laughs> so close to finishing. Yeah. Just went to put the inhibitor in, dropping the mag filter, and uh, forgot to turn the valves off. So, that's okay. what one and a half bars worth of pressure. Yeah. Good, coming good, up. good, good. <laughs> that looks like. Good job you haven't put everything back in the air yeah. yet. Good tip, so, always uh, turn the valves off. So okay. close to finishing the whole thing without having a flood. Go and get some towels. The system's now been up and running for about a month and a half. We've had some pretty cold temperatures in that time. Um, so let's have a look at the data. So the data from the system, it's got a full open energy monitor level three uh, monitoring system using uh, mid approved uh, heat, heat metering equipment and electricity monitoring equipment. Um, the, the data from the system is live on heatpumpmonitor.org. So the system is this one here. So as you can see in the last 30 days, it's, the, it's in the top 10 um, top performing systems. And it's actually the third best performing valent uh, aerotherm plus out of the uh, 100 systems or so that are that are on here so pretty pleased with that it's actually beating this is my um my house uh down here it's actually beating my own system uh, in my own house my samson by 0.2 of a cup if we click here um so so far since the system was put in uh, it's currently averaging a scop of 4.6 and in the last 31 days uh, it's scope of 4.7 so pretty happy with that especially given the cold temperatures that we've uh, that we've had so let's have a look at the detailed monitoring data 
So if we click here to go straight to the data, it's using about eight kilowatt hours of electricity per day to deliver about 48 to 50 kilowatt hours of heat. So let's have a look at a, an average day in November before it got particularly cold. So you can see we're running with a flow temperature of about 30 degrees when it's about 10 degrees outside. We're maintaining um, about 21 degrees in the, in the living room. So on the coldest day of the year so far, when it went down to minus two, um, the systems used 17 kilowatt hours of electricity to deliver 64 kilowatt hours of heat. And it got, it got a CAP of 3.8. But you can see here when it, now, now the temperature has got, I've got colder, the heat pump is running pretty much continuously, um, using about 600, 450 watts of electricity there, putting about two kilowatts of heat into the house. So this good performance will translate into very affordable running costs. Previously, their, their, their electric storage heaters were costing them around £1,700 per year. And that's even with utilising uh, off-peak tariffs. And that wasn't providing all the heat to the house. The wood burner was also providing quite a lot of heat. So assuming that the heat pump now provides the full heat load for the house, um, the heat pump will cost them around £500, £500 per year. So that's a saving of, of around uh, 1,200 pounds a year compared to the storage heaters. And that's not taking into account the fact they've got a uh, home battery storage system and solar PV. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's, how it's performing. Um, it's coping just fine with the cold temperatures. I've got no worries at all about this winter. And you, you saw the wood stove there at the beginning of the video um, since the heat pump has been installed. I, my parents haven't used it, haven't used it once. So they're, they're very happy with how the heat pump is, is working. Uh, well, it's um, near the end of November, and I think we've had uh, the heat pump installed for how long is it, Glenn? About uh, just over a month? M month and a half. M month and a half. Uh, it's uh, going pretty cold now. There's even some ice <laughs> off a, a nearby bucket. Uh, it's perhaps a good moment just to give a first assessment. Uh, notwithstanding that uh, Glyn is, is our son, we, we have to say that the system is actually working incredibly well. Uh, the house is warmer than, than it's ever been. We, we're still staggered at, at really how efficient the uh, air source heat pump is, is working. And it seems to me that there are at least three things you need to bear in mind if you're going to have a heat pump installed. Uh, you need a good installer, you want to make sure that you have a good plan and um, the installation and the correct monitoring seems to be critical and if you do have one installed, if you have it installed well, I'm actually certain that you're going to be really happy with it. We, we, we certainly are uh, at, at this stage and uh, the rest of the family are inside the rooms about uh, 22 23 centigrade and i have to say notwithstanding how biased we are we're really very very happy with uh, with the installation